Greetings viewers, Corporal Iron John here reporting from the front lines. From the front lines uh, with your very first factory communique. I will be providing you with the latest news and updates for all commanders and soldiers to continue your war efforts in Iron Harvest. First things first, we have the ranked ladder being supplied to every enlisted member of Iron Harvest to continue their war efforts. Wait, we had soldiers out on the battlefield without their rankings? Oh. That kind of ranking. Iron Harvest has just become more competitive. With the addition of ranked gameplay, your position on the ladder is going to be decided by your skill rating, or SR. There are six leagues in total. Bronze, Silver, Gold, Platinum, Diamond, and Master, with four divisions in each league. With every match played, you will either gain or lose SR. Earn enough SR and you will be promoted to the next division or league. Losing SR, though, may result in you being demoted. To establish your initial rank, you will need to play a series of placement matches. Currently, we estimate at 10 to 15 placement matches, which will need to be played before getting reliable and fair matchmaking. This is simply because right now we don't have the data to precisely match you with the players of similar skill. Next up, to aid some of you during the war, the autocast abilities have been made available to you. So some of you may know of the legendary sniper from Polania, Anna Koss, and her piercing shot ability. Now that is one of the many abilities available to be triggered autonomously. Yes, since that's the day and age we live in now, um, that's a thing, so thanks Tesla. Please note though, it doesn't make sense for all abilities to be used this way and it is optional. But more might be enabled with enough feedback to the brass upstairs. Now let's discuss some of these uh, change logs. So the general changes are AI improvements have been made starting from medium to a higher difficulty. The position of default rally points entering a building has now changed as well. Fixed crashes relating to uh, online connection when playing single player modes and some freezes during campaign missions. Fixed an animation bug to prevent Olga from falling into her concussive state. General UI and tooltip fixes as well. Updated multiple minimaps and to accommodate all these changes and fixes, all saved game files will be invalidated. Okay, now let's talk more on the behalf of balance changes, uh, specifically starting off with the heavy mechs. The Tur, Gulai Gorod, Kaiser are performing really well on the battlefield. However, mid to late game, we don't get to see the other mechs shine. So, the Tur, Gulai Gorod, and Kaiser are no longer available as reserve options. And these three mechs will require you to build an advanced workshop and an advanced barracks to even field these heavy mechs onto the battlefield. Field cannons and anti-armor gunners have also received some attention in regards to their effectiveness versus infantry. We are all aware of some commanders loving to rush the headquarters win condition, however the engineers have been hard at work to fortify these structures, so moving on, hopefully it'll be a lot harder for some of these commanders to achieve this victory from now on. Reinforce, repair, and heal are all costs that have been affecting the war zone. However, with tweaks here and there ranging from mechs, medic heals, and exoskeletons, we will probably see this used more on the battlefield. Speaking on behalf of Polanya, Michal Sikorski has been an invaluable member of the Rebellion forces. However, with his recent tweaks, you're going to have to use him slightly differently. As well as his counterparts like the Ritzesh, Strashnik, Shmiawe, Mocne, and the Wafsa have undergone some changes as well. Jumping straight into Saxony's pride, the Brunhilde has been a very powerful hero mech, however, it was hard to utilize her properly. With these upcoming changes, as well as the Stiffmutter and Wotan getting some tweaks, hopefully we'll see them shine more on the battlefield for Saxony. And last but not least, the Rusviet engineers have been double-timing their war efforts to increase the effectiveness of some of their mechs, like the Koloko, Nagan, and the Serp itself. So. Don't be surprised if you see him more on the battlefield. We are about one month in since this war started, and just to recap some of the newest features available in Iron Harvest, two brand new battlefields are in a 3v3 called the Greatest Wastest, which still gives me nightmares to this day, and a 2v2 called the City Harbor, which we actually won a battle yesterday. Yay! Uh, a new codex is also available to everyone that likes unit stats, lore, and some uh, tutorials just to refresh your basic training knowledge if needed. As well as the co-op campaign which includes 21 hours of missions so you can co-op and complain and blame to your ally when things go awry. Before we end this segment, um, we're, uh, this just in, 
from the brass upstairs um as many of you know our kickstarter player survey uh, revealed that most of you wanted the campaign experience to be the focus of our development with this largely complete and receiving much praise we can now shift our attention to the multiplayer experience okay all right the recent map additions is only the beginning as we assess your feedback and establish our long-term goals for future updates cool thank you well with that being said stay up to date with all things iron harvest consider joining following and, and going to the Discord, Twitter, Reddit, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitch. I don't know what those are, but go ahead and go there. Um, with that being said, I am Corporal Iron John, and I'm signing out. Have a good one. What's a Facebook? <laughs>